It's Scott with Eat, Love, Pray, RV. I hope you're having a great day. Today I want to talk about Harvest Host and Boondockers Welcome. Some of you watching might know quite a bit about it. You've uh, used the program a time or two. Others, it might be new to you. In fact, part of the reason I'm doing this is I've ran into a lot of RVers at different sites that haven't ever heard of it. So I think it's one of the great uh, experiences that Becky and I have had in our RVing this year and so I wanted to share it with you. So let me start off and, and share with you the concept of it. Harvest Host and Boondockers Welcome joined forces I, I believe in the last year or so. Harvest Host is primarily um, businesses that are allowing you to, business of some form that is allowing you to stay on their location. You're going to have wineries, breweries, restaurants, churches, golf courses, farms, um, uh, shops that, that sell uh, goods of some sort. And that's primarily what you're going to find on the Harvest Host side of things. On the Boondockers Welcome, this is typically RVers that are offering their location for other RVers to stay. And in turn, they're usually staying at other people's location uh, that benefits them. So they're usually RVers and travelers that uh, basically like to reciprocate the hospitality that they've been given already. Uh, in, in many of the Harvest Host scenarios, they, they are RVers as well, but Boondockers Welcome, you're going to find that more often than not, they are currently active RVers. So that's kind of the concept of it. The app you download the app, it can be used on your laptop or on your phone. Really, really easy to use. Uh, I believe the cost per year is, is somewhere south of $100. Depending on when you buy it, they have some specials going on. I don't think I've seen it for less than $79, and I think it retails for somewhere right around $100. And you get that app, and you're able to go on and search your location. There's a number of different uh, criteria you can set up or different filter settings that you can have so for instance with us we have it set up for the size of our rig we're 45 feet so we don't uh, we want to exclude anything that's less than 45 just so it doesn't um, confuse uh, our search and make it uh, less efficient so you go onto the app you're going to find places in the areas that you're going to be looking to stay or where your travels are taking you and it, it's really a warm introduction because what you've got is you've got a profile that you've had to set up for yourself. It includes your rig, why you're traveling, who's traveling with you, what you're doing, what your motivation is, a little bit about yourself. And you're always also going to be able to hear that about the Harvest host or Boondocker Welcome host. Uh, why they're offering their location, what amenities they have to offer there, if any, um, who they are, what they're about. And another nice thing you're going to be able to see is the reviews that you've got from other uh, people that have stayed there. So it's very, very helpful. It's very simple to use. If you decide that you want to check the availability to stay there, you open up the, the map. If they've got availability, it'll have dates there. You click the dates that you want to stay. Now, typically with Harvest Host, it's a one night stay. A lot of time with Boondockers Welcome, they'll have three or four or five nights stay. But in our experience, it's if you wanted to stay more than one night, once you create that dialogue with the host, you can ask them if they're available, if it's available to stay more than one night. And we've had a lot of success in doing that. We've had many hosts that have said, yeah, stay two or three nights if you want. We've stayed five nights at a place. So with, um, with that app, you're going to schedule your stay. Now, a another option is they've got a phone number in there. And a lot of times you'll have to call or you want to call and follow up. But we've had very, very good uh, results with just using the app and going in on the on the calendar there. So some things that we really like about Harvest Host and Boondockers Welcome is you stay in places that are unique. You're not staying in RV parks. You're not staying in places that, that typically everybody else is staying at that, that's just a, a weekend warrior RVer. You're staying in places that are uh, unique, that are not businesses that are advertising for RV stays. Um, a lot of times you're staying in an area that it just creates a cool memory. Right now I'm sitting here uh, in a place called Morehouse, New York. And the leaves are starting to change color behind me. They've got a nice pond back there. They've probably got upwards of 100 acres with varying uh, different sites. In fact, for some of the smaller units, they've got a spot down the way 
that is right on the river. It, I mean, it's beautiful. And where we're at is a nice big open field. Um, I've said this many times if you've watched many of our videos, but uh, a large motivation, the four things that we're looking for is, is a convenient place to stay that's safe, that is budget friendly, that's dog friendly. So a lot of times we find that there are open fields like we're staying in right now that is grass and Gus can run all he wants. And so it's wonderful staying in these places. Um, so let's talk about the etiquette real quick. The etiquette, they'll put in there in the app what they allow. Do they allow generators? Do they allow outdoor cooking and slides and all that? We found that most of them are, are really easy going, right? I think if we were staying in somebody's place right next to their house, they might not want a generator going. But for the most part, it, it all boils down to just being courteous, uh, cleaning up after yourself, uh, you know, treating it as, as you would want somebody to stay if they were staying at, on your property. So the other part of the etiquette is, I mentioned it before, I believe, is that if you're staying at a Harvest Host, they want you to spend 20 or $30 doing business with their business, right? And we have really enjoyed that. We bought some great gifts, some great souvenirs. When we've stayed at restaurants, we have um, eaten there, which, I mean, you gotta eat, so that's you know already in your budget to spend some money on some food, so you get to experience some local flavor, potentially. Uh, we've stayed at museums, and they want you to go through their museum. Well, we've, we've picked a museum that we're interested in. And so uh, whether it be an antique car museum or some historical museum, and you stay there and uh, you're paying to go through their, their venue. So we really like all of that. It really has a good feel about it. We like where the fees are going. Um, uh, some of the Harvest Hosts, probably more boondockers welcome than Harvest Hosts, uh, but you will find that you have some hookup options. You might have water, you might have power, you might have sewer. Uh, in Boondockers Welcome, quite often you'll see that there's a power option, um, at least one, maybe two, sometimes 10. We've had that happen. So you've got some hookups. So what to expect? Let's talk about that for a minute. What to expect? Well, you'll expect to have pretty good communication from most of the hosts. They get right back to you. They're they're, when you're there, most of them come out and meet you right away. They want to find out where you're from, what you're doing, how you're doing. You have a common bond. They're excited ab about what you're doing. They have a love for RVing as well. There is definitely a social aspect involved. Uh, what I mean by that is most of the RVers, like right now we've got another RVer behind us down there by the pond. They're, they invited us over to join their campfire last night. Uh, we sat out here and talked this morning for a while. You, you really do have a social aspect and, and you'll find that more often than not you're you're going to make a friend or two so hopefully you're comfortable with that most of the time you're going to be dry camping expect that most of the time you'll have no hookups at all so just plan accordingly and that's part of the appeal with it also is with no hookups there's really limitless places that you could park an rv uh depending on the size and things like that but they these, these other people on the property they yesterday they got right down on the river uh, and you wouldn't you would be hard-pressed to find that spot in an RV park right now especially on the river that they're on here nearby uh, another thing to consider is in and out times we've tried to be very very courteous we try not to show up after five o'clock we we try not to leave uh, you know at, at three in the afternoon unless they've allowed us to so just be courteous about that maybe show up before five o'clock or, or ask them when they want you to show up making sure that you're not running your generator at all hours unless they've said it's okay and just you know some common courtesies there so let me share with you two categories of places that we've stayed one i would say would just be places that I wouldn't say that they were our, our least favorite. They, they served a purpose. They were more for our travel days and it was, they were a place to park, um, hopefully safe, uh, and, and it, it served its purpose for us. It was, it was a, in our opinion, that maybe a better alternative than a, a Walmart or a Cracker Barrel or, or something like that that you might also consider staying at when you're, when you're on travel days. We stayed uh, at a church in Oklahoma City and we were the only ones there. Um, we don't know anything about Oklahoma City. Uh, it, it, it was a safe place. We just, we didn't know what to expect. It wasn't our favorite. It was a flat asphalt parking lot in a church. We showed up at seven o'clock that night. We left at 10 o'clock the next day. We never even met anyone from the church, which is fine. They just requested that you make a $20 donation through Venmo. Real, real simple. It worked perfect for us. 
We stayed at a harvest host in Oregon called the Farmer's Cup. Right off the freeway, he had a little coffee barn there, did coffee and, and danishes and things like that. Uh, again, a- asking you to spend you know uh, $20 on, on the things that they sell. It was just a flat, dirt parking lot. It served its purpose. I will tell you that one was very close to the freeway, and we found it a little difficult to sleep because it was during the summer, so we had the windows open and there was a lot of noise. But still, it was a great place to stay on a travel day. Uh, another uh, wonderful spot to just, if you just needed a place to stay, we stayed in, in Indiana in, at a place called Teaberry Woodworking. And he's got a wood shop there. He's a wonderful man uh, named Laverne. And he and his wife, Rachel, uh, it was a great place. It was safe. They made great things out of wood. I mean, that was their business. Very simple. It was a gravel parking lot. We parked out front, had some grass for the dogs to to run around in, but it was very, very simple for us. Uh, down near Hershey, Indiana, we stayed at Ace's, smoke, let's see, Smoke and Ace's Barbecue, uh, a restaurant. Good barbecue. Like I said, you've got to eat anyway, so we ate there. We stayed there for two nights. We drove into Hershey to go, you know, to the museum and things like that. It worked out perfect for us. No hookups. Uh, there was five of uh, Harvest Host RVers there. Uh, very friendly people. We're all doing something that we love, so that worked out good for us. Now let me shift gears to memorable settings, memorable experiences. Our favorite Harvest Host and Boondockers welcome. And, and part of why I described or defined that Boondockers Welcome Harvest host, host differentiation at the beginning is we didn't know, we had done Harvest Host, we had never done a Boondockers Welcome. We go to our first Boondockers Welcome and I said, hey, it didn't show how to, you know, any products to buy or how to donate. And they said, no, Boondockers Welcome, you don't do anything. Maybe if they provide power for you or something, they might have a 10 or $15 uh, fee that they want to charge. But with Boondockers Welcome, it, unless otherwise noted, it is free. They are fine with you staying on their property for free. Again, they're trying to reciprocate hospitality that they've appreciated in their travels as well. So here's four Harvest Host and or Boondocker Welcome locations that we would consider uh, so far. They are our favorites as far as an experience goes. In, in, in no particular order, I'm just going to go as I, wrote, as I wrote them down. We stayed at Riley... I think it was Riley Blueberry Farm up in Priest River, Idaho. Uh, you're up there in the top of, of Idaho. It's beautiful country up there. We were right on a blueberry farm, literally right there next to the blueberry uh, plants. It's a pick your own uh, scenario. You go pick your own blueberries if you want. They also had a, a little store there, a little converted shed. It was very nice. It had a freezer in there, a fridge in there, and it was a cash box. It was the honor system. We loved that. That was refreshing. Uh, we bought a fresh blue, blueberry pie that was frozen. We brought bought a couple bottles of yogurt, or not yogurt, um, of syrup. We bought some jam. There were a lot of things you could buy. They even had fresh eggs in there. We find that quite often. There's fresh eggs that you can buy in different places. And prices are all really reasonable. We absolutely loved the blueberry farm. We wound up staying there three days. We just talked to him once we, uh, I actually called him on the phone and I said, hey, we're gonna be up there a couple of days. Any chance we could stay an extra day or two? He says, yeah, you can stay a couple of days, no problem. Uh, another place we stayed in Indiana was, it's called Roberts Farms. And you are right out there in the middle of this big farm. They do corn, hay, pumpkins, and they raise boer goats. And Tracy and her husband were so friendly, so accommodating, so wonderful. She gave us a two-hour tour of her property. Uh, They're obviously very proud of it. They're first-generation farmers. She had gone to the expense and the effort of putting in 10 hookups, 30 and 50 amp hookups out there in their beautiful grass field that they made just for RVers. And they had a community dump site that you could uh, empty your black tanks if you needed to. And they had water set up out there. So it was wonderful. We were right out there in the cornfields that they had cut down and added grass back in there. Um, A big pumpkin patch. They had over 60,000 pumpkins. And then obviously their hay operation. We really enjoyed that. 
uh, that a lot of times these become a really nice base camp for us. In fact, when we were at Roberts Farms, we did a number of things in Indiana, including on a Saturday, we went into a Notre Dame football game. So we had a safe place to store our RV. We knew the dogs were gonna be safe back at the RV. It was, it was a, a really uh, nice experience for us. I've got two others that I'm gonna share very quickly. Uh, Sunny Acres in Bath, New York. A couple down there, Tim and his wife, Cindy. Very nice people, they're fellow RVers. This is a boondockers welcome. Uh, they can probably they could probably host 10 RVs if they wanted to. They had 50 amp hookup they let me use. They had water if you needed to fill. They actually had a, an on-site dump if you wanted to use that. They didn't want a dime from you. They were right on a creek. They had horses. They had free-range chickens walking around that were kind of fun. A beautiful setting. Very nice people. They said, hey, at night we do a, a fire together so if you want to join us feel free it's a community fire they had a little fire ring over there and we got to sit around and meet the other two RVers that were there we had a great time that evening and then I'll share this place that I'm at right here for a couple of reasons this is Morehouse New York um, one reason I want to share it is because it's such a great beautiful setting we it's right here in the Adirondack Mountains Dawn, uh, she met us yesterday as we arrived. We text, She said, text me an hour before you're going to be here. We did. Uh, unbeknownst to us, it's so that she could be out by the road waiting for us in her ATV or on her ATV in her golf cart. And she showed us where to park. She said, you can park anywhere you want. They've probably got 10, 15 acres sitting here. Park wherever you want. It's grass. It's beautiful. Unique place. Her husband's got just about every uh, kind of power sports toy you can imagine they do snowmobiling they do uh atving and uh the the big one that surprised me he has a helicopter and he flies it almost every day she said and they've got a, a number of different parcels of property and it's just they've got a labor of love that they're building up here it's it's incredible so uh this was a great place the, the other reason i bring this up is on harvest host actually this is a boondockers welcome but same site the initial photo that you saw wasn't good. They only had seven other people that had put photos on there. It really didn't give you a feel and a flavor for what this place is about. I'm trying to add as many photos as I can right now onto it to let you know that this is a great place. It's easy to get to. It's great roads here. There's plenty of uh, spots to park, to turn around, to maneuver. Uh, we met the, the people that are staying behind us last night. As I mentioned, we went. they invited us to join their fire last night just a really really neat experience so i wanted to share this with you harvest host boondockers welcome hopefully it answers some of the questions for you it helps you out helps you understand the concept helps you understand the cost and the app and how you use that uh, the what to expect the etiquette the people you're going to meet the places why they're unique why they're fun why it's a neat way to go experience rving and then i'm i'm gonna add a couple of the, the names through here of of i think i mentioned eight or nine of the places that we stayed some of them were good just you know travel day spots that all we needed was a safe place to stay other ones were uh, really cool unique beautiful experiences that we had so hopefully you're enjoying these videos if you have suggestions please feel free to reach out i appreciate them i had some nice comments the other day with some good suggestions you can reach me if you'd like to email it's at elprv23 at gmail.com uh, or you can leave a comment here on YouTube. Um, you can uh, like it. You can go in the comments. Give me feedback. I really appreciate it. hope you're having a great day. look forward to spending more time with you on other videos. Thanks, and we'll talk to you soon.